Your first game might not be a huge success. However, you have to enjoy making games, and the most fun part is coding the gameplay. So why don't we make it easier? For every game project you start, there are basic things you need every time. Assets like fonts, sounds and buttons, manager scripts for managing sound levels, UI interaction and more. Custom packages, maybe for UI or environment. Now you can recreate this every time you start a new project, or you can create a modular one and reuse in every new project. So by creating custom templates that include these common parts, you save time on each new project. You don't have to set up everything from scratch every time. For example, instead of setting up your game's menu system from the beginning each time, have a template where the menu is already made with a play button and level selection screens enabled. Most games also have a win and lose screen. You can add this as well. Just remember to change it to fit each game's unique style. I've written code by hand for the past 11 years. I've coded in Notepad on my phone. I've done it all. I have lots of experience in logic and programming. Yet even with all that experience, sometimes coding can take a lot of time and be repetitive. That's why I use tools like ChatGPT to write complex code, fix bugs, and solve problems. With ChatGPT, I can create custom level editors, complex systems, and algorithms. So any feature I can think of can be added to the game and I don't feel overwhelmed or lazy. AI is just a tool to help you work faster and focus on the fun parts of making games. It boosts and amplifies your existing skill set. You can also use ChatGPT to help you write scripts for reusable code, like I mentioned in the previous point. Let me know if I should do another video on this topic specifically. If your ideas are small and you can spend some money, you can hire a freelancer to develop the game for you. This way, you can focus on designing the idea and working with the freelancer to make it real. Imagine having a great game concept but not enough time to code it yourself. By outsourcing, you can still see your idea come to life without doing all the work alone. So, you just need to find a reliable freelancer, look on websites like Upwork, Freelancer, or Fiverr, explain your idea clearly, provide drawings, examples, or detailed descriptions, set a budget and timeline, agree on how much it will cost and when it will be done, communicate regularly, stay in touch to make sure the project is going well. This means you can bring your vision to life without having to handle all the coding yourself. It saves you time and lets you work on other projects or focus on important tasks. However, working with freelancers needs trust and clear communication. Make sure to choose someone who understands your idea and can deliver quality work. As a developer, you need to understand your strengths and limitations. You could make a big complex game like Stardew Valley, spending four years on it, creating the art pixel by pixel, making the music, coding all the systems, and then enjoy the rewards later. But that might not be practical if you have limited time, so you can make small, manageable games and release them one by one, just like these simple games you see on the screen. It depends on many things, your ability to take risks, your technical skills, your experience. To begin with, choose an idea that fits your current situation. If you're working full-time, you might be able to spare only two to three hours a day to work on a game. Therefore, pick a project that is small but still exciting to you. In my game development Discord server, I keep sharing small but exciting games that attract millions of players. So feel free to join more than 500 game developers. We are all eager to make games and earn money. Making a game is one thing, but how do you know if people will like it? That's why you need to test your ideas. Here are some ways to do it. Spend a little money on Facebook or Google Ads to see if people are interested. This is not the best approach for beginner developers, and unless you are working with a publisher, you can end up spending hundreds of dollars. Work with a game publisher who can test your game with their audience. If you have an interesting game, publishers would be willing to spend some money to buy paid advertisements to drive players to your game and check the engagement metrics. Go on Reddit, YouTube, or Twitter to share your gameplay footage and upload a demo for the players to try it out. Use platforms like Poki to let players try your game and see what they think. Poki has a cool tool that allows your game to be played by a set of players and get their screen recording to you. So you can see how the players go through your game and analyze the behavior. But remember, feedback might be mixed, so focus on helpful comments to improve your game. You can become a super programmer and build games quickly, even if you have little time. Yet, it requires smart strategies like I discussed before. To recap, create custom templates to save time on repeatable tasks. Use tools like ChatGPT to help with coding. Delegate projects to a freelancer. Choose ideas that are manageable given your time and resources. Validate your ideas early to make sure you're on the right track. Now that you have a game ready, how can you earn money from it? Check out my other video to understand how you can earn money while sharing your games for free with millions of players so you can enjoy making games. See if players like them and maybe even earn some money all without spending endless days. I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop your questions or feedback in comments or my Discord server. Thank you for watching. Until next time.